Hello and welcome to Fredit for Beginners part 3. We've got our text from last time but I've made one or two slight subtle changes to it including making sure that the language is set to US as it might be if it came in with the word color and we have our Fredit list and uh, first point is that I've used highlight uh, in order to show things up in the find and replace but we can just as easily instead of having highlighting we can use text color and in fact I find that more conducive as you're reading the text the highlight is a bit in your face whereas color is a bit more subtle so let's run the credit list so click in the text there run the list and you can see you've got their font colors now you'll notice that actually it hasn't changed that color or that one and I'm sure you'll spot the difference there. The point is that those have a capital C and this illustrates the point that Fredit assumes that the changes are going to be case sensitive. So if you want case insensitive, in other words to catch all versions of capitalization for the word color, then you have to use a, a special character at the beginning of the line. So we put in there the bent pipe as I call it which is on my keyboard the uh, top left above the shift key. So if we put that one in, go back to the text, undo the original changes and run Fredit again. Okay, so this time it's changed the color of all of the occurrences of the word color. So now we've got uh, some more changes to look at. So let's undo those go back to here and have a look what I've got below here. So the first point is that we've got this symbol here, this hash symbol, and what that does is it stops Fredit in its tracks. In other words, Fredit goes down the list and executes those first five find and replaces, then it gets to the hash symbol and it stops and says, right, I'm going no further. So if I remove that, then Fredit this time will carry on through there and go to this next line. Now that next line actually doesn't do anything. Because there's a, a vertical bar at the beginning of the line it counts this as just a comment. It's something that I've put into the text to remind me what the next two um, find and replaces do. They're very strange looking find and replaces so what are they? Well, it's a way in which within the find and replaces that we're doing, we can execute a macro. So, do macro language set UK. Hopefully, that should be fairly obvious. It runs a macro called language set UK, which sets the language to UK. And then the second macro looks, does something to do with the ends of the paragraph. So, we'll run it, see what it does, and you can see. So if we click in there and run Fredit, so what it's done is the find and replaces as before. It's got to the language set and it's changed the language to UK as we wanted. And the macro is one which looks through all the paragraphs and tries to find any paragraphs that do not have a terminal punctuation such as full stop, exclamation mark or question mark. So it's found these two. Obviously this one here shouldn't have one, but at least I'm alerted as I'm reading this paragraph. I read that sentence there, I get to the end, and I don't then just skip on to the next paragraph. I'm alerted to the fact that there's no full stop on there, so I can add it. Okay, that's it for now. I'll be back in part four with some more ideas. Thanks for watching.